Right, hi. Um, firstly, I just want to apologise for the fact I've got a horrible stinking cold and I'll probably be sucking on sweets and coughing and sniffling and such. <coughs> there you go, example one. Um, my name's Tom LeClaire, I'm the ASO manager at Wooga, um, and I want to talk to you today about review mining. It's something that uh, not very many people pay too much attention to, and yet I think it's, a, it's an emerging, di emerging discipline that I think can, can probably be very useful to, to a lot of people in this room. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, if there's anything that you want to ask, um, feel free to grab me later. I love talking about this stuff, or, or ASO in general. Um, so, let's get started. That way. Right, so this presentation should be fairly short, um, broken down into three bits. Firstly, why you should care about review mining. Um, this is about what re why review mining is important and why reviews are important. Um, secondly, how you might go about review mining, so the options that are available to you. And thirdly, why you should go mining, what, what it can actually give you in, uh, in, in real terms. So, uh, first off, the definition of review mining. Um, this isn't from the dictionary, but it looks like it. Uh, analyzing qualitative data from app store reviews with a view to increasing an app's visibility or quality. That's one way of defining it. Um, I prefer to just think of it as listening to users. Uh, when you listen to users, you're almost always going to make more money or create more positive actions uh, from your users. So, why should you care? I, I do a lot of review mining for a lot of different reasons, and I hear a lot of reasons that people make to, to ignore reviews, and I have my, uh, my comebacks to that. And I just want to pick out the, the top three of those. Um, far and away, the most common one I, f I find, uh, the most common reason to ignore reviews is that you can't do anything about bad ones. And while this isn't entirely true on Google Play, on iOS currently, there's no way of changing a, a negative review. Um, I don't think this is entirely true, um, because the, what you can do is make sure that those reviews, those negative reviews, don't happen again in the future. Um, so secondly, if they're good, a lot of people just don't care. They just think, hey, five-star review, I'm heading up the ranks. But the, the problem with that is that the people that give you five-star reviews are the people that really care about your app. And the, they're the evangelists, they're the spenders. These are the people that you really want to communicate with. Um, thirdly, a lot of people simply can't, maybe perhaps they're developers or, or marketers, they simply can't understand that quantity of qualitative data. They prefer numbers, they want stuff broken down really easily. Um, and, and what I'd say to that is review mining can turn a lot of this qualitative data into quantitative data, which then makes it a lot easier to analyze, particularly if you automate it somehow. <coughs> So, there's uh, just in, in general, if your app delivers a positive experience, I think it's obvious that you're, you're going to get more positive actions from it. And review mining will help you come closer to your users and thus give them a more positive experience. Um, the, the sheer value of the, the data that we get is astonishing. I mean, if, 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 in this example, if Candy Crush paid for this data, and it's pretty basic data, but it's, it's high quality data, they'd be paying 70 grand for it. And it's remarkable how much free information we're given and how little we use it. Mm. Uh, and finally, I think really importantly, uh, nine out of the 10 top grossing apps have less than 5% negative reviews, which, Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of these top app, top app developers are directly review mining, but what it does mean is that they, they obviously see it as integral to their success. So I think including reviews into, into or a metric of reviews into your ideas of success, I think is hugely important. So, excuse me. Um, secondly, how to dig? What are the options to you? This should be fairly, uh, fairly swift. 
Um, you've got three options in general, a manual version, a bespoke, uh, develop your own version, and an enterprise option. So firstly, manually, how, how do you manually uh, review mine? Now this is all about getting a cup of coffee, sitting down at your desk, going through your reviews, and either using, you know, you don't need specialist tools for this. You can use Control F, you can use an Excel chart, you can use any, a pen and paper. Um, and this is about going through your reviews, looking for high quantity uh, keywords or sentiments, and using those to improve your app or improve your visibility. So this is just you, pen, paper. Simple as that. You it can all be done in iTunes Connect. You can download uh, CSVs from App Annie. It's it's very um, it, a very good way to start. So if you if you if you haven't touched your reviews, you just gl glanced at them. Then manually, before you get going with anything else, just having a look at your at your reviews is very useful. Big problem with this is that I mean I've been doing it re recently. Uh, to do some qualitative research, and manual review mining is a real pain. I mean, it, it, when you're talking about thousands of reviews or hundreds of reviews, you have to start sacrificing um, sacrificing quality, and and that's not so great. So it, it works perfectly for smaller developers, and you can also look at your competitors if you don't have a huge amount of uh, of reviews. And it really doesn't scale very well. <coughs> So the, the next option is creating your own tool uh, to review mine. And really, there's, t there's two important things to remember here. If you're looking at your reviews, firstly, you need a tool that will be able to tell you the, the quantity, the frequency of search in your reviews. So you need to know, for example, how many times the word crash appears in your one and two star reviews. So that's the first most basic tool, and you can do that in Excel, uh, you can do that a number of ways. Uh, the second is that you need to be able to, your, your bespoke tool needs to tell you what your most frequent keywords are. And I think that's hugely important if you're looking to really, really get deep into this. And that kind of fractures out into being able to tell you what combinations, what synergies of keywords go together. So these tools can, developing your own tools specifically for your needs, it can, it can, the cost can rack up, particularly if you're, um, if you're outsourcing it. But the real advantage here is it fits your, your uh, purpose perfectly, <clears throat> and you can always tweak it. So thirdly, the enterprise option. Um, these are enterprise packages offered by analytics companies like SensorTower, Mobile Dev HQ, uh, Mobile Action, App Annie, et cetera. Um, and these are unbelievably robust tools in, in general. So, I mean, some are better than others, but these will tell you everything you need to know and more and get you excited about reviews and, and do a hell of a lot for you. The, one of the problems is, is that they'll generally, review mining comes as a portion of, of a full enterprise package. So with an enterprise package, you might get a localization service, you might get an ASO manager, you might get an account manager, someone to take you through all of this. Um, and and some, some larger companies might not need that, and some smaller companies might find that prohibitively expensive. So the, the, there are problems to these, despite the fact that these are excellent tools. So those are, those are the three options. Um, and thirdly, the sort of meat of, of this is why you, why you should go mining. What can you get out of it? Now, there's four sort of broad, uh, broad areas, but <coughs> I think I'll, um, I'll start with the, the competitive edge. And I think this is something, well, this is something I've been doing a lot recently. Um, and this is about looking outwards and using your reviews or using your competitors' reviews as part of your development process. So this is particularly useful if you're concepting, you're prototyping, or even building new features. And what you're, what you're trying to see is what your competitors do well, what they do badly, and why. 
Um, and you don't necessarily need to be looking at high volumes of keywords here. You're really just getting ideas to put into your development filter. However you do it, review mining will give you ultimately more ideas about how, how you should develop, what you should develop, etc. Um, and this is about looking outwards at your competitors' positive and negative points. So in this example, um, I, I sort of this is a common one that comes up in healthcare. Um, if you see this problem, <coughs> review mining might help you answer things like, can I overcome this problem? Is it worth me overcoming this problem? And perhaps quite importantly, how can I deliver my solution to my users? So it's all well and good having solved a problem, but then how do you, how do you make, your, make your potential users understand that your app is better in this particular area? So that's a competitive edge, like using the review mining or app reviews in, in general to, as part of, your review pro, uh, part of your development process. So secondly, and very similarly, um, and I think it's very useful for understanding the failure of your apps. And, and this happens a lot with people that, that say, oh, my app's performing badly, can you do some ASO on it or whatever? And I, I don't think that that's a particularly good way of looking at it, to, to, ask, to, to have a problem and then ask a professional without then doing the, doing the things that, you know, basically listening to your users. Um, and this is particularly useful for poor performing, poor performing apps and looking at whether your monetization works. It's particularly good at looking at when, whether your monetization system works, in fact. Um, and the, the key points here is that you're, you're looking inwards. You're looking at your own negative reviews. You're, sometimes you might want to look at the, the higher reviews to see whether you can ring fence certain features of your, of your app, whether you've got a, a, an app that people don't like, but they love one feature, for example. And again, you don't necessarily need to be focusing on high volume, uh, a high volume of complaints because you're getting ideas. This is about generating ideas that will help you fix your app or help you produce a, another feature. So in this example of, of games, again, like the, the Facebook syncing monetization aspect of games is often one that pops up in review mining. And you have to ask yourself, or this review mining may help you answer questions like, is this integral to my app? Can I fix this? And again, how can I deliver this message to my users? How can I say, I fixed the monetization problem that you've all, all been moaning about? I think that all of the, even the top apps don't really look at review mining to, to help them deliver a message. They don't look at, um, at how useful this can be. So that's understanding failure, and that's looking inwards at your own uh, issues, I suppose. So thirdly, sentiment analysis. Um, this has been happening in the web for ages, well, across everything, high street, banking, blah, blah, blah. Um, and sentiment analysis is, is all about grouping together keywords or sentiments that help you get a much, much better idea of exactly why your users like or don't like your app or like or don't like another, another company's app or, and also how your app performs in relation to, to theirs. So this is really useful for, for building brand to find out what, you know, you could have this great idea of brand and, and people, and, you're really behind it, but if your app reviews aren't reflecting that, then you may want to change it. You may want to start focusing on the things that people do like about your app. Um, also, really, really useful for prioritizing your next move. Uh, and I've, I've found this particularly useful at, at Wooga. So, what you're doing is you're looking across all of your reviews, you're looking at your negatives, you're looking at your positives, so one and two star reviews and five star reviews, then you're looking in the middle, so three and four star reviews, for more qualitative data, so more uh, people that, that give three and four star reviews generally give more suggestions, recommendations, they're generally 
a little bit more engaged with your app than people that give one or five stars. So what you would do is you would look, go into your, your reviews or, or your competitors' reviews and then group together the ideas, the, the, the keywords that create a sentiment. So, for example, in this example, if, you're, if you want to find out whether your monetization strategy is an issue for your app and it's something that's turning people away, you might start looking at things like price, pay, cash, money, etc. And grouping those all together to, to then prioritize uh, uh, your next move. So in the example here, um, <coughs> this isn't from the travel industry, but I don't know why that's said, but anyway. Um, in this example, uh, the technical sentiment and the price sentiment, there's huge differences there. There's, if I'm looking at that, I would say that I need to fix my technical issues. I need to fix my crashes, my bugs, etc. At the same time, I could look at that and say, actually, yeah, my, my pricing strategy works. It's, it's fine. It's not turning people away. I can improve some elements, possibly. But my next fix, my next development sprint is all about fixing my uh, technical aspect. So that's sentiment analysis. That's bringing together ideas or concepts to give you a better idea of where you should go next. So fourthly, Keyword generation, this is something that's very, very close to my heart and, and something that I think is essential for any ASO out there um, in the same way that, you, that you, wouldn't, um, you wouldn't look at keywords on web without having a little look at Google, Ad, uh, Google Planner uh, or Google Trends. I, I think the reviews are a key, key thing for any, anyone looking for keywords out there. So this is all about finding those hidden gems of language. Not necessarily just for keywords, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, and this can also be really useful for codifying your, your brand language. So what you're doing is you're taking the reviews, the language that your users use, and then you're giving it back to them, whether it's in community management, whether it's in marketing. Uh, and this is a technique that's been used in sales writing for for since it began, you take the language that your users love and you use it back to them. You communicate in the same language. So this can be incredibly useful for that as well, uh, which then is useful for community management, marketing, etc. So <coughs> what you're doing is you're looking for this extreme positive language, things like love, addict, shock, hate. Well, actually, maybe not hate probably a bad example. Um, and you're focusing on the, high, the higher volume, the better. And that will then tell you the language that your users are using in the reviews. And then you can put that into your keyword filter, in, into your sort of pool of keywords that you then filter down and get to your nominated 100, uh, 100 character keywords. Um, and that, can, that will basically add options to your keyword searching. Because a lot of people will, when they're thinking about keywords, they'll just go, oh, I'm going to write down the keywords that I think are, are the important ones to me. And they don't think about the ones that their users are using or the, their competitors are using. So um, in the example of a, a productivity app, you might see here, um, high volume keywords such as meeting, addict, freelancer, etc. And you would then put those into your pool of possible keywords and filter them down as normal. And I found so many amazing keywords doing this. Um, so yeah, that, so that's keyword generation. And remember, it's not just about keywords. It's about potentially about marketing or community management as well. So uh, the three things I'd, I just want people to take away from this is that reviews are incredibly valuable and we don't use them enough. It's simple as that. No, nobody uses them enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the proof of that is that all of the top apps, top grossing apps, consider reviews in some way or another. Uh, they may not be directly review mining, but they're considered. And thirdly, there's, no matter who you are, no matter what size of company you are, there's some combination uh, of review mining option that will suit you, that will 
in some way help you. <coughs> so, I uh, just want to say thank you for listening. Uh, and if anybody's got any, um, any questions, feel free to either email me or talk to me later today. Okay, thank you.